All right, guys, so in this video, we're going to pick up where we left off with our chapter five, part two review. And this video is going to start with problem five on the review. So this is kind of consistent with what we were talking about in problems three and four. In this problem, it says the function f is differentiable. The graph of f prime is shown. And again, it's really important to recognize that this is f prime, not f, so that when we're answering these questions, we think through them the right way. It says for part a, on what intervals is f? F increasing. So the first key here is to understand what it means for f to be increasing. If the original function is increasing, that means that f prime of x is greater than or equal to zero. We also need to justify our answer. So after I've determined the correct intervals, I'm going to make sure that I justify my answer correctly as well. If I'm trying to figure out where f prime of x is greater than or equal to zero, and I'm looking at the graph of f prime, then what I'm really thinking about here is where is this graph above the x-axis? So that would be on this first interval here and on this last interval here. So I would say f of x is increasing from negative six to negative two, and also from two, two, three, four, five. And then I need to justify my answer. So I would say because f prime of x is greater than or equal to zero. For part B, it says identify the locations of any relative extrema. So relative extrema means either maximums or minimums, and then justify our answer. Relative extrema means max or min. And the word relative means we don't consider the endpoints. So in other words, the negative six and the positive five would not be part of our answer here. Now this is gonna be different than when I ask you later on about absolute maximums and absolute minimums, in which case the endpoints would be part of our consideration. So it's important to know the vocabulary here so that we make sure we consider all the possibilities that we're supposed to be looking at. So for this problem, for just relative max or min, I'm going to do this in a very similar way to the way that I found the relative maximums and minimums in problems three and four, which is I'm going to look for the x-intercepts and where it changes, where the graph changes from positive to negative or negative to positive. So for this part right here at the negative two, it seems like I'm changing from positive to negative, which means I'm going to have a max. And at the positive two, I'm changing from negative to positive, which means I'm gonna have a min. So what we're gonna do is just kind of list those and then justify our answers with the same types of justifications that we did on the previous problems. So I would say there's a relative max at x equals negative two. And I would say because f prime of x changes from positive to negative. Now I'm going to follow that up with there's a relative min at x equals 2. because f prime of x changes from negative to positive. All right, now we're gonna move on. We're gonna talk about a different type of problem. So problem number six is what we would consider a table problem. This is a very typical FRQ question on the AP test. Um, and so this one says, let f be a function that's continuous on the interval from zero to four, and f of four is negative three. The function f is a twice, is twice differentiable function except at two. And the reason they're saying except at two is because both the first and the second derivative are not defined when x is two. 
The function and its derivatives have the properties indicated in the um, table where it does not exist indicates the derivatives do not exist at two. All right, so it says for part A, I defined the x coordinate of each point at which f obtains an absolute maximum or an absolute minimum value. So that's kind of step one. Find the x coordinate of the points where f has an absolute max or an absolute min. For each x coordinate, state whether there's an absolute max or an absolute min. Now what makes an absolute max or an absolute min different than a relative is that these could be located at critical points, which are places where the derivative is equal to zero or does not exist, or these could be located at endpoints. So when I'm doing this problem, I'm going to need to take into consideration critical points, so places where the derivative does not exist or is zero, as well as the endpoints of the function. So to do this, we usually use what's called an options chart. Now you may remember this because we actually have done this multiple times in a variety of contexts. So we're going to have x and we're going to have f of x. We're going to look at the x values and the y values in a variety of places. Now, in order to figure out what numbers to put in this chart, I'm always going to use the beginning x and the ending, which is 4. I also need to look at places where the derivative is 0 or does not exist. So that tells me that I should also include the number 1 and the number 2 in this chart, which means I'm going to list 0, 1, 2, and 4. Now from the chart, I know that the y value at 0 is negative 1. That's right here. I know that the y value at 1 is 0, 2 is 2, and back in the directions, it tells me that 4 is negative 3. Now based on this information, I can determine that the highest number on this list is the 2. And the lowest number on this list is the negative 3. So that would be my absolute max, my absolute minimum value. Now, to answer this question, I need to list the x coordinates and to tell whether they're absolute maximums or minimums. So what I would say here is I would say there's an absolute maximum at x equals 2, and there is an absolute minimum at x equals 4. Now for part B of this question, it says, for what values of x is the graph of f concave up? So now concave up is asking us to focus on the second derivative. So we are looking for places where the second derivative is greater than 0. Now in this chart, I'm going to identify where the second derivative is positive, which would be these two intervals. So I would list 1, 2 which are the beginning and the end of those x coordinates, and 3, 4. And to follow this up, it says justify your answer. So now I'm going to need to explain how I knew that, which is I'm going to say because the second derivative of x is greater than 0. Last but not least, it says on the axes provided, sketch a picture. So now it's important to understand that there are three pieces to this puzzle. What are the y values? So that would be the numbers in this row. What are the slopes? So that would be the numbers in this row. And what does the concavity look like? So that would be the numbers in this row. So what I'm going to do is start with the y values. So I'm going to start with when x is 0, the y value is negative 1. When x is 1, the y value is 0, 2 is 2, 3 is 0, 
And everything after that is negative. It's important to note that it's also telling me everything after that between three and four is negative. Now, I find it easier to do this when I have a visual. So everywhere that it says positive for F prime, I'm going to draw a little uphill arrow to indicate a positive slope. And everywhere that it says negative, I'm going to draw a little downhill arrow to indicate a negative slope. Everywhere that it says negative for the second derivative, I'm going to draw a concave down like a frown. And everywhere that it says positive, I'm going to draw up like a cup. Now, the reason I would do this is it helps me visualize how to connect my dots. So between the 0 and the 1, I want to go uphill but be concave down. So I need to look like this half of the frown. Now, I'm going to make this really exaggerated. You want to literally draw half of a frown. Then I'm going to go uphill but be concave up. So I'm going to look like this half of the cup. So really exaggerated, look like half of a cup. Then downhill but concave down. And then downhill but concave up. Now I'm going to stop at the 4 because it says the graph stops at the 4. I'm not going to stop at any particular y value as long as it's negative, we're good. We can also use our graph to double check our previous answers. So if I say there's a maximum at 2, is the highest point on this graph at the x equals 2? Yes. If I say the absolute minimum, oh, I'm sorry, I do know the value at 4. I apologize. I know the value at 4 is negative 3. 1, 2, negative 3. It just wasn't on this graph, so I didn't think about it. That was my bad. So it would go like this. Is the lowest that this graph goes at 4? Yes. And am I concave up between 1 and 2 and also between 3 and 4? Yes. So all of these answers should correspond and talk to each other. You shouldn't have answer A contradicting answer B or answer C. Okay, for the next question, we're going to move on to some multiple choice type examples. So for problem number seven, it says if f prime is given, then which of the following are the relative extrema? Now, in order to figure out relative extrema, it's helpful to have a chart of options. So the first thing I would do is I would take my derivative and I would set it equal to zero, which means I'm taking my equation x minus two times x minus three squared times x minus 4 to the third, and I'm making it equal to 0. I'm going to get three different answers, x equals 2, x equals 3, and x equals 4. From there, I'm going to make a chart. So the beginning is negative infinity, and then I'm going to put these numbers in order, 2, 3, 4, and positive infinity would be last. Now, just like in my other problems where I was figuring out the intervals for myself, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to look at the signs for each of these sections. So a number to the left of negative 2 would be like 0. If I plug that in, I get a negative times a positive, because a squared is always positive, times a negative, which means two negatives make a positive. I'm going uphill. Between 2 and 3, like 2.5, I would have positive, positive, negative. So I would be going downhill. 3.5, I would have positive, positive, negative. So I would still be going downhill. And then 4.5 or 10 or whatever number bigger than 4 that you want to pick, you'd have positive, positive, positive. So you'd be going uphill. If we kind of imagine connecting these dots, I can see that there would be a max at 2 and a min at 4 and nothing at 3. So is it true that there is a relative max at 2? Yes. Is it true that there is a max at 3? No. And is it true that there is a max at 4? No. There would be a minimum at 4, which means 1 would be my only correct answer here. Number eight says, here's the graph of f prime. Which of the following describes the extrema? So based on these answers, all I'm really doing is counting how many I have. What I'm going to do is label this on the graph to make my life easier. 
So here I'm going to have a gra the graph changes from negative to positive, which means this is a minimum. Here the graph changes from positive to negative, which means this is a maximum. And here the graph changes from negative to positive, which means it's a minimum again. So I have two minimums and one maximum. So one maximum and two minimums, that would be option A.